page 20 all through the night. This is a wonderful little arrangement. 4-4 four, four time, so there's four beats in a measure and a quarter note gets a count, blah, blah, blah. It starts out in one sharp, which is G major here. But you'll notice that the bottom of the last line on page 20 at the end of the line, you've got double bars and then there's natural signs. So the natural signs are taking the sharp signs away in the key signature. So now we're going into the key of C major. Make sure you can do the scales, the one for G major and one for C major, and you should be doing these at least two octaves up and down by now, in my opinion. We're moving around a bit, it gets a bit tricky. So let's just check this out carefully, starting with the right hand, and again, I'm assuming you can do dotted rhythms. That's a one and two and three. The fourth finger, just reach up. One and two. Connect this as best you can. Second line similar. Let's go down to the third line. So you're into the second line here. So just lift up here. Just, you may have to practice that. It's not a quick jerky motion or nothing. You just lift up and move. Connect this as best you can. Try and get these notes down at the same time. Not like me. I'm not doing it, but you can do it. And then third measure there. First B and then one two. Just use the thumb as your pivot and come across here. So it's here. One and two. And now you can do one five on these if you want. However, I suggest you do a one and then a one four. One and two. And if you can, do a one three. If your hand's not big enough for that, then you'll have to do a one four. But if you can do a one three, it's the melodium. That's what I'm after. On page 21, it's the same as page 20, except now we're in C major. You're up here, one and two. It's going to be the same fingering. You're just up there. just try and connect the notes. And on the third line down again, same thing, same fingering. I'm, I'm using weight to push these down. I'm just lowering which fingers I want the weight to be on. So I'm here, and you can drop the wrist each time. To start with, take it real slow and easy. Cross, cross over. It takes practice on parallel thirds. It just. I mean, you can do that. That's good practice, but you should do it in both hands. We need to develop both hands. I'm just lowering the weight each time. You have a hand, fingers down on this one. I raise the wrist, I lower the, as I lower the wrist, I'm switching which fingers I want. Again, these fingers. Again, and you take it real slow and easy, whatever long. And you gradually, over time, as in months or years, you slow, speed it up. And you get it that way. It comes eventually. But these parallel thirds are used a lot in piano playing. So don't shy away from them. Left hand, well, mainly chords. One, two, three, four. I use fourth finger on the C sharp. It's an A, and, and then if a third finger, the fingering is up to you. If you want to use one and five on these, go with it. I just don't see why the little finger has to do everything. I mean, the thumb's doing it. You get a broken chord at the end. Do that some more. At the end of the second line, that is a broken chord, a G chord. That is the fingering for a G chord is fourth finger on the B. Some people use third. I don't teach that. I teach fourth. So I write fourth finger on that and then here. Um, I mean, when you get to the arpeggios and the arpeggio videos, this is the fingering I teach in those. So, third line down, starting here, and then third finger, and then one. The 
idea is we're just using different fingers on these repeated notes. You don't have to. You can use the same finger if you wanted to. But I like using these different fingers. Normally, I just take two fingers and alternate them. Because I can do a two and then a one and then a two and then a one. Although I don't really want to end with a one at the end of the line because I need a one for the next line. i got to come up here. So I would prefer to end the third line on some other finger than one. So I might work that out. I can do it here. I can do two, three, two, three, and then one. Page 21 is the same thing, you just in C major, you're up here. So they have a two, and a three, and a four, and you could even do a five on the last one if you wanted. I still think I'd just do a two, three, two, three. It's just different fingering. It's not one fingering is wide right and one fingering is wrong. It's just different fingerings. I mean, some fingerings are better than others. In this case, I don't think it matters. Then we'll put the hands together and see what happens. And then... There's a couple spots in here. It's the same idea on each page. What happens once on each page, and just to make sure you understand. And the first line on page 20, is also the first line on page 21, in the second measure, you have a C sharp in the bottom staff. And then a little bit later, you have a C natural in the upper staff. See, there's no sharp sign in front of that C in the upper staff. The sharp sign in the lower staff only applies to that staff. It doesn't travel across staffs. So just because you have a C sharp here does not mean you have a C sharp here. See how bad that sounds? No, it's a C natural in the upper staff. So that, remember that the accidental supply from that point on to the rest of the measure in that staff. Hmm. So watch that. It's the same thing on page 21 in the second measure. The first line, you have an F sharp in the lower staff. But it's an F natural in the upper staff, here. So be sure, don't, don't let the music throw you there. And it's not an error. They didn't leave out the stuff. It's, it's the way it really works. So you go through and put the hands together. You'll be fine. At the end of the page, on page 20, you're here. Both hands have to move up to here. And that gets tricky when both hands have to move at once. We prefer to maybe move one hand at a time. Well, we can't really do that here. Both hands have to move. You're going to lift up and move. Well, practice this if you have to. You're here to end, and you're going to here. You know where you are and where you need to be and which fingers are involved. And you just practice that move. You do the best you can with it. Yeah. The beat has to be a steady beat, though, so don't mess up the beat because you're moving the hands around. Uh-uh. So you go through and take out the hesitation so the rhythm is steady. Then as far as the articulation goes, you're pretty much connecting everything here. And in this particular piece, it works out to about every four measures is a phrase. So in my opinion, you just connect every four measures. I don't agree with their slur lines at all. And the left hand, just connect that as best you can. together. In the right hand you're going to lift up. The dynamics go to the melody. Start out moderately soft. Everything else is soft or very soft. And then the third line down you're going to go to moderately loud. Just keep the left hand soft here. measure there and you're going back down to moderately soft so the you're soft you're 
explaining it that way. Then I, the dynamics for page 21 is the same as page 20. But again, in my opinion, you just need to get it to know it well enough that you're you're not thinking about the mechanics and you're getting into the music. And if you feel a, a crescendo someplace, put it in. That's feeling it. It's interpreting it. At the end on page 21, you're going to slow down here. That's fine. Just slow down if you want to. Speed. This is supposed to be a lento is slow. Lento. Don't drag it. It's too easy in piano to drag it. It needs to flow. There are words to this. They don't have them in this book. Somewhere in that area. Depends on how much coffee I've had to drink for that. Now they've added pedal to this and that's a good idea I think because it's very dry and it's very choppy. We'd like more overtones and we'd like to connect things and frankly I would like to add a lot more pedal than what they're doing so I have some suggestions to make on the pedal which is unusual because usually I'm like let's not pedal this so much but this one is like we got to pedal this a little more. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pedal pretty much all of it, most of it. And it's going to be lag pedaling or overlapping pedaling. So I'm going to push the notes down first and then the pedal. And I'm going to change it pretty much with the half notes in the left hand. So it's here and change. Change. And then in the last measure, you can keep it down for the measure. I'm going to lift it up with the right hand so I hear a phrase. I'm going to connect the left hand. There's no fret here. It's just the right hand in the pedal. And the, the second line is the same way. And then when I get to the third line, I'm, here I'm going to change it every two beats because it gets too mushy if I don't. And I want to connect these thirds kind of hard to do without the pedal. So I'm going to go ahead and pedal it but every two beats. And then and back to every two beats. Page, page 20, I'm lifting the pedal up and everything. There's just a speck of silence in both hands before I go on. And then page 21 is pedaled the same way. I'm pedaling it pretty much the whole page. Uh, every two beats, pretty much. And I think that's a little better than what they're suggesting.
I like to play it with you slowly. It's slow anyway. So let's just check the notes and the rhythms. Now I'm not going to do any dynamics. I'll pedal it like I suggested, so you can see that if you want to. I'll give us four counts. Let's try that. One, two, ready, go. One and two. Three, four, hold, two, off.